one of them with Professor uh, Hadim El Gohari, one of the eminent stars and eminent professors in EQB in Kafr Sheikh University and head of uh, orthopedic surgery uh, unit in uh, orthopedic surgery department in uh, Kafr Sheikh University. He will speak about the meniscal injuries. The second talk will be with Professor Dr. Absamir Halawa, uh, professor of orthopedic surgery, Banha Faculty of Medicine, and he will speak about the meniscal repair. Uh, we will start now with our beloved professor, Professor Dr. Hatim Gohari, speaking about meniscal injuries. Thank you, sir. May you start, sir? My extreme thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Meniscus is a structure made of fiber cartilage, which, which fits within the knee joint between the tibia and femur. Each meniscus has two ends, anterior end and posterior end, anterior root and posterior root, inner border and the outer border, upper surface and lower surface. The median menis meniscus consists of posterior horn, body, and anterior horn. It is C-shaped meniscus. Its posterior horn is attached just anterior to the posterior cruciate ligament behind the intercondylar eminence. The anterior horn lies anterior to the intercondylar eminence. It is attached by coronary ligament to the capsule of the knee joint and the tibia. Why the lateral meniscus is a part of a circuit where the anterior horn and the posterior horn are closer to each other when compared to those of the medial meniscus. The body of the lateral meniscus is thicker than that of the medial meniscus. The periphery, the outer border of the lateral meniscus is more thick than the medial meniscus. The lateral meniscus is separated from the capsule by the popliteus muscle. Most of the body weight on the medial meniscus is borne by the posterior part of the meniscus. The lateral meniscus is attached to the ACL and BCL. When comparing the, media, the lateral meniscus and the medial meniscus, the lateral meniscus is smaller in diameter, thicker in the periphery, wider body, more mobile, attached to both ACL and BCL, while the medial meniscus not attached. The blood supply of the meniscus differs according to the age of the patient. During the period, the neonatal period, the menisci are mostly vascular. Nearly all the meniscus is vascular. This vascularity decreases by time. As adulthood, the peripheral part of the meniscus, the outer third, is vascular. The middle third is, has query vascularity. The outer third, which is vascular, is called the red-red zone. The middle third called red-white zone, while the inner third is avascular, and called the white white region or zone. This blood supply comes from the medial and the lateral genicular arteries, superior and inferior branches of these arteries. Again, the vascular supply of the medial meniscus is about 10 to 30 percent, and that of the lateral meniscus about. 10 to 25 percent of the meniscus. Tears within three millimeters of the periphery from the periphery of the meniscus is in the vascular zone, the red red zone, and more liable to healing and more liable to repair. Tears more than five millimeters from the periphery are avascular, present in the white zone. This is the red red zone, red white zone and white white zoom. As regards the histology, meniscus 
is formed from fiber, is a fibrocartilaginous tissue formed of chondrocytes and extracellular matrix. This extracellular matrix is formed by the chondrocytes. The extracellular ma matrix consists of collagen type 1, 2, and 3, and the glycosaminoglycans. The collagen provides the structure and the elasticity, while glycosaminoglycan adds also in the structure and attracts water. Chondroitin and glucosamine sulfate are involved in the formation of glucosaminoglycan. In cross section, the menisci are wedge shaped. The fibers in the superior surface and the inferior surface in, that is contagious with the articular hyaline cartilage of the femur and the tibial plateau. The fibers are attached, are arranged randomly, mimic, mimicking, mimicking the hyaline cartilage arrangement. This similarity of arrangement of fibers between the superior and inferior surface of the sky and the hyaline cartilage of the femur and tibia makes the friction between the sky and the tibia and the femur less. Under these fibers, the fibers are at, attend, attached or arranged in circumferential pattern and the radial pattern. Third of the fibers are attached in the radial bat direction, while two thirds attached in circumferential bat. The menisci acts as joint filler. As we know, the distal femur anatomically seems like a part of a circle. The tibial plateau, nearly flat surface. The Meeting of this circle with this flat surface is and is not is not congruent. The bar the space between these parts, the distal femur and the proximal tibia, is filled by the menisci. In absence of this menisci, there is the the cap will be during as we see this is the distribution of stresses of the body weight over the mini sky distributed on the upper surface and redistributed from the lower surface to the proximal TB in absence of this in the absence of the menisci, the distal femur meets the proximal tibia in smaller area, and the body weight is distributed over a less area. And this makes threefold load over the articular cartilage. The presence of the menisci acts as shock absorption, decreasing these loads. The menisci follow the tibial condyle during flexion and extension, but during rotation, they follow the femur. In flexion and extension, the menisci follows the tibia. In rotation, they follow the femur and move on the tibia. Consequently, the medial meniscus becomes distorted. The lateral meniscus, which is firmly attached to the, attached to the bubleteus, muscle and to the ligaments of Reisberg and Humphrey follows the lateral femoral condyle during rotation. Therefore, it is likely to be injured. Acute twisting injury from impact during sport, the foot stays fixed on the ground and the rest of the body rotates. Also, another mechanism is getting up from squatting position. Internal rotation of the femur over the tibia. When the knee in flexion forces the posterior segment, the posterior root of the medial meniscus towards the, the center of the joint. This posterior horn will be entrapped in this position and, and when 
uh, with sudden extension of the knee. Vigorous external rotation of the femur as regards the lateral meniscus. Vigorous external rotation of the femur while the knee in flexed position displaces the posterior half of the lateral meniscus towards the center of the joint. During sudden extension of the knee, again, the anteroposterior and anteroposterior selecting force tends to straighten the cartilage and imposes a strain on the medial concave rim, which tears transversely or obliquely. Clinically, meniscal tear may be asymptomatic or associated with pain on the joint line. Giving away may be present, locking may be present. On examination, there is effusion, diffuse swelling of the knee joint due to hemarthrosis when the tear in the periphery or meniscus or at the meniscus synovial junction, or due to effusion, due to irritation of the synovial membrane, joint line tenderness, quadriceps wasting after time, and the limitation of movement. Extension may be limited, also flexion may be limited by pain. There are special tests for diagnosing meniscal tears. First is McMurray test. The principle of McMurray test is to trap the meniscus between the tibia and the femur. The, the examiner supports one hand on the joint line and the other hand holds the foot and the ankle. And flex the knee at about 90 degrees and rotate external and the internal rotation. When there is pain at joint line medially or the external rotation is medial meniscal tear and with internal rotation at the lateral joint line it is lateral meniscal tear. To examine, to do McMurray test for the posterior parts or posterior horns of the mesky, do the same but in hyperflexion. Positive McMurray test clicking or popping or popping felt associated with pain. Apple grinding test. This test is done while the patient is prone and the knee flexed to 90 degrees. Distract the knee ligaments and internal rotate, internal and external rotate of the leg. When there is no pain at uh, this uh, uh, while distraction, this means that the ligaments are intact. Then do the next part, uh, the other part of the test, while compressing the leg to trap the meniscus. And do internal rotation and external rotation. When there is pain, there is positive test for meniscal pain. Sicily test. So is, is done while the patient is standing on the affected side. Flexion of the knee to 20, 20 degrees and rotate the body externally and internally. Clicking or pain and discomfort as joint line is, means a positive test. Meniscal tears are classified by cover into three radial zones, A, B, and C. A is the posterior horn or posterior part of the meniscus, B is the body, and C is the anterior horn. And the four circumferential zones, 0, 1, 2, 3. Zone 0 is the tear at the meniscus synovial junction. 1 in the red red zone, 2 red white zone, and 3 in the white white zone. Meniscal tears have different shapes. And orientation, they include vertical longitudinal tears, transverse radial tears, horizontal tears, complex and bucket handle tears. As we see, the longitudinal tear comes in the occurs in the direction of the circumferential fibers, within the circumferential fibers. When this tear progresses, it may lead to bucket handle tear. As we see, the central part of the meniscus is, uh, comes medially to the, towards the notch, 
intercondylar notch. And, uh, and it, it looks like the handle of a bucket and the remaining part of the meniscus looks like the bucket. Radial tear, this tear cuts the circumferential, circum, circumferentially arranged fibers and may progress to barot peak tear. Flap tear, as we see, is the horizontal tear, is a tear in a part of the meniscus. The line of the tear is parallel to the tibial plateau. When this extends, it causes the flap tear. Radial tears or transverse tears occur at the junction of the posterior and the middle third and may extend towards the periphery. As we see, may extend towards the periphery. It occurs mainly in healthy meniscus due to trauma. This tear disrupts the, the circumferential fibers, which distribute the hope stresses and losing the ability of distribution of the hope stresses of the meniscus. Horizontal tears, tears occur in degenerated menisci with, with the extension of with, with the old age. The tears are parallel in direction to the tibial plateau. Is it occurs most commonly in the posterior aspect of the medial meniscus. It occurs mainly due to or secondary to shearing forces. Complex tears. Now, when the tear has more than one, more than two, two or more tear configuration, like this tear, this is radial part of the tear and circumferential part or vertical part of the tear. This is a complex tear. This is a radial tear, fraying of the edges, barrowed beak tear, and horizontal flap tear. And this is vertical tear in the direction of the circumferential fibers. Horizontal tear, tear making the cutting the meniscus into superior and inferior segments. <coughs> complex tear has minimal potential to healing. Complex tears are not amenable to three, mostly not amenable to three to repair. Bucket handle tear. This, uh, as we see, this is a bucket handle tear. When we doing uh, uh, excision of the bucket handle tear, we do first we reduce the tear to to see all its extent. Then we do excision to the anterior part and leave part of it attached, then go to the posterior part after grasping the anterior segment. This is the meniscus, the barrowed peak, the, the bucket handle. This is the peripheral part. This is the bucket. This is the part forming the bucket and the handle is medially towards the notch. Okay. Reducing the meniscus. Making a cut of the anterior part of the meniscus. I prefer to leave a small part attached like this, small part attached in the anterior part of the meniscus, then go to the posterior part of the meniscus and cut it, leaving also a part attached, then grasp the anterior part of the meniscus <coughs> with a grasper.
as you see. after excision of the torn part of the meniscus. Discoid meniscus, and the discoid, the discoid meniscus is a rare entity of the meniscal, of the menisci, occurs mostly in the lateral meniscus, where the lateral meniscus is nearly discoid in shape, not C-shaped. Thicker than the normal meniscus, surface area covers about 80% of the lateral tibial plateau. Less vascularity when compared to the, to the normal meniscus. Decreased number of collagen fibers with a more disorganized cost. Uh, MRI of the discoid meniscus, the transverse meniscal diameter more than 15 millimeters between the free margin of the periphery of the body on, on any coronal view. In sagittal view, the bow tie side appears in more than three cuts between each cut, five millimeters. So it is more than 15 millimeters as we see in this cut. One, two, three. Four. So the meniscus appears, the bowtie sign appears in more than three cuts in the sagittal view. The squid meniscus may be managed non operatively or operatively. The non operative management, when the, the squid meniscus is discovered incidentally, when examining the knee or, or, uh, or doing uh, any maneuver for another pathology and no symptoms or physical signs. Snap, also in a snapping knee with no other symptoms and no radiographic signs accompanying or accompanying articular lesion. The operative management, repair or scissorization. If instability, of the, with the peripheral detachment exists, meniscal repair should also be performed. Subtotal or total meniscectomy gives good short-term results, but increases the incidence of degenerative changes on long-term. Imaging of the meniscal tears. The anteroposterior plain X-rays, anteroposterior lateral and the tunnel view or intercondylar notch view and tangential views are done routinely for meniscal injuries. These radiographs not, will not confirm the diagnosis of a torn meniscus, but it is done for exclusion of osteocartilaginous loose bodies, osteocartritis secans, or any other pathology. MRI is the most sensitive. Means sky appear as low signal structure. It appears dark in all pulse sequence. Best studied on sagittal and coronal planes. In sagittal plane, as we said, as we mentioned now, the bow tie sign configuration it appears as a bow sign configuration. Arthroscopy is the gold standard for diagnosis and treatment. Through inspection of the sky, ligaments, and the cartilage, all extent, type, and site of stairs and generative changes will appear on arthroscopy. Non operative treatment of meniscal tears. When we, we manage meniscal tears non operatively, non operative management is the first line or degenerative tears. When there is acute episodes of synovitis, synovial veins, but without mechanical symptoms, without locking, also for incomplete meniscal tears, 
small size meniscal tears less than five millimeters or small stable peripheral tears with less than three millimeters of displacement without any other injury. Non-operative treatment includes price, protection, rest, eyes, compression, and elevation. Protecting the injury from further damage by using support. Resting the limb with, with the use of crutches. Eyes, the painful area to decrease pain and swelling. Icing is done by five, uh, 15 to 20 minutes for 15 to 20 minutes every two to three hours. Compression of the limb by elastic uh, of the knee by elastic bandage, but this bandage is removed during sleep. Elevation of the limb to decrease swelling and pain. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and anti measure measures are also added to the price. Operative treatment may be through meniscectomy, either partial, subtotal, or complete meniscal repair, meniscal transplantation, or meniscal replacement. The objectives of meniscectomy is to remove the torn mobile meniscal fragment and leaving a stable peripheral limb, contoured peripheral, peripheral limb. No standard technique for every case. Every case is considered a special entity. Partial meniscectomy, there is less articular cartilage generation after partial meniscectomy when compared to total or subtotal meniscectomy. Excision only of the torn abortion. This is a treatment of choice in young adults who require vigorous activity. It is indicated when tears are more than five millimeters from the meniscus synovial junction away from the vascular zone. When the tear is flap tears, complex tears, or horizontal tears. Subtotal and total meniscectomy. Subtotal meniscectomy occurs mainly for, uh, done mainly for complex tears of the posterior horn. The anterior horn and portion of the middle third of the meniscus is preserved. Total meniscectomy done when the meniscus is completely detached from the periphery or there is extensive meniscal tear or degenerative and degenerative tears. After meniscectomy, uh, after a long time, with a long term follow up, there is changes that occur in the joint called Fairbanks changes. There is joint space narrowing, which is the first radiological sign of osteoarthritis, flattening and squaring of the femoral condyle, and osteophyte formation at the non weight bearing areas of the knee. Meniscal repair, which is the next lecture. Uh, Dr. Samir Halawa will discuss it in detail. Uh, uh, meniscal repair depends on the location of the tear and its morphology and the patient factors. Factors depend on the patient and in the shape of the tear and size of the tear and the location of the tear. Meniscal repair can be done when the tear in the peripheral part, red, red zone, or red white zone when it is small, less than one to two, two centimeters, when it is very vertical or longitudinal tear, which is the ideal type for repair, young patients show better outcome. It is contra, 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 relatively contraindicated when the tear more than three centimeters, when it is transverse tear, even if it is in the periphery. Flap radial complex tears, or when there is ligamentous instability, unless this ligamentous instability is correct. Resection versus repair. Horizontal cleavage tears typically
capsular and ligamentous laxity and late changes degenerative osteoarthritis. Meniscal transplantation. Patients with no general changes, allograft and autograft replacement may be done. Allograft, allogenic grafts, quadriceps, tendon, patellar tendon, and for patellar bad or fat. And nowadays, replacement may be done by biological tissue, tissue scaffolds, and the researches are in progress for the progression of biological tissue scaffolds. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Hatim El Gohari, Professor and Head of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, Kafri Sheikh University, for this excellent and illustrative talk. Hadrutak uh, Edetna highlighted about the Minuskai in a very simple manner the types of tears, the management algorithm, or the management protocol. وأهم حاجة حضرتك في الآخر in a very simple and illustrative manner اتكلمت uh, exactly على the debate between resection and repair وده كان أجمل حاجة بصراحة في التوك بتاع حضرتك يا فندم ألف شكرا Thank you very much for this talk Thank you Thank you so much شكرا جزيلا شكرا يا فندم We are waiting for questions for Professor Hatem Any question? احنا مستنيين لو في اي questions لحضرتك تمام يا فندم مع سيادتك يا فندم احنا برضو بن insist ان حضرتك ان شاء الله يعني هتكون من الكورنر ستون معانا في ال ال second part of the course في ال traumatic مع سيادتك يا فندم فنأمل ان حضرتك يعني ما تحرمناش من مشاركة حضرتك فيها فندم مع سيادتك يا فندم دكتور محمد ده شرف ليا يا فندم any questions؟ الله يخلي حضرتك شرف لنا يا دكتور حاتم بيه any questions to دكتور حاتم؟ دكتور مجد السيد اي ثينك عايز يعمل مداخله دكتور محمد اوكي دكتور احمد الشيخ دكتور مجد السيد عايز يعمل مداخله بليز ميك هيم ان ميوت دكتور مجدي Hello, hello, hello. I What about meniscal root repair? Hello. Dr. Magdi, what? Dr. Magdi. What about meniscal root repair? What about meniscal Dr. Magdi, Dr. Magdi, Dr. Dr. Hatim. Dr. Magdi, Dr. يا دكتور حاتم انت طول عمرك بروفيشنال يعني الله يحفظ صحتك يا فندم وات اباوت مينيستر روت ريبير بتعمل المينيستر روت ريبير يا دكتور حاتم والله يا فندم انا انا سبت الريبير علشان الدكتور عبد السميح حلاوه هيتكلم فيه فما رضيتش اتكلم فيه خالص انا بس قلت هنتس بس كده لا انت بنفسك بتعمل مينيستر روت ريبير يعني في حالات ايوه يا فندم اه اه لما يكون لما يكون حضرتك الجوينت هيلسي بعمل مينيستر روت ريبير تمام تمام طيب ولو عندك ديسكويد منسكس وهي مش سمتوماتايزنج بتسيبه آه. ولا بتعمله؟ والله يا فندم يعني حضرتك لو هو مش سمتوماتايزنج خالص يعني لو انا اصلا داخل وشغال يعني بشتغل لحاجه ثانيه انا بعمل بعمل سوسيرايزيشن تمام هو ده انا بعمل كده برضه لان آه. بي هو بيعمل البيزك البيزك تيتشنج يا فندم البيزك تيتشنج بيقول ايه؟ بيقول يعني انت ليف ات بس الواقع لان حضرتك هو معرض ان يحصل له تير قبل بعد كده بسهوله جدا. ف... وبيعمل مور ستريسز على الميديال سايد يا دكتور حاتم، بيعمل مور ستريسز على الميديال سايد تمام يا ريس تمام يا فندم تمام وعشان كده موست اوف كيسز كومينج ويز ميديال مينيسكال تير ويز ميديال مينيسكال سايد بين 
and uh, uh, in MRI, we found bowtie appearance of lateral meniscus. Uh, we found ulcers in the medial side of, uh, of the knee, of the medial femoral condyle. So, we went to sterilization uh, of lateral meniscus uh, in all cases of squad meniscus, if not symptomatizing. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hatem. Dr. Magdi. الله يحفظك فاكرين يا دكتور مجدي على على المداخله الجميله دي احنا سعداء بسماع صوت حضرتك يا استاذ الدكتور مجدي استاذي من زمان وناقشني في الدكتوراه من عشر سنين يا فندم اه دكتور حاتم انت راجل محترم طول عمرك و ربنا يحفظ سعادتك استاذي وعلى راسي دكتور مجدي السلام عليكم ازيك يا دكتور عبد السميع ازي حضرتك استاذ معلم بالشفاء لاخونا وزميلنا دكتور سيد بيومي طبعا يا رب يعطينا يوم بالسلامة يا رب ويعافينا جميعا يا رب العالمين امين يا رب امين دكتور آه مجدي هو بخصوص بس الديسكويد مينيسكس هو كان في حق يعني ريسنت ريسيرشز ان الديسكويد مينيسكس هو احد اسباب الفيروس ديفورمي زي ما حضرتك بتقول بالظبط يعني تمام تمام اوكي ب... تمام يا دكتور عبد السميع تمام ماشي يا واحنا متشكرين على المحاضرة الجميلة دي يا دكتور حاتم الله يخليك يا فندم ربنا يبارك في حضرتك الله يسلمك الله يسلمك على مداخلة حضرتك يا دكتور مجدي سعداء بسماع صوت حضرتك تعيش يا دكتور ده دكتور محمد تعيش ربنا, ربنا يبارك لك يا رب ربنا يبارك لك يا دكتور مجدي ان شاء الله شكرا يا فندم شاكرين يا فندم شكرا يا فندم دكتور حاتم بي وي هاف تو كويستشنز وان فروم دكتور محمد موسى وات اباوت ذا نيو كلاسيفيكيشن ان مينيسكال تير شفت المحاضرات ده اول تدخلات العلاج دي بس هو مؤكد يعني شوف بقول لك ايه ناخد المجد والاستاذ وهو اللي كان بيناقش في الدكتور مي سير دكتور حاتم اي يا فندم في كويستشن حضرتك وات اباوت ذا نيو كلاسيفيكيشن اوف مينيسكال تير ايوه يا فندم بنتكلم عن اي كلاسيفيكيشن ايه بالظبط السؤال نيو كلاسيفيكيشن هو الكلاسيفيكيشنز الموجوده حضرتك اللي هو الراديولوجيكال كلاسيفيكيشن بتاع الام ار اي اللي احنا ذكرناه آه والكلاسيفيكيشن على حسب شكل المينيسكال تيرز اللي موجوده يا yeah. yeah. ما هو هو يا ريت يوضح لنا دكتور محمد موسى وات دو يو مين دكتور محمد باي ذا نيو كلاسيفيكيشن Is it uh, uh, MRI classification you mean, or uh, intraoperative classification, or what, or what new classification you mean, sir? Another classific, another uh, question from Dr. Mahmoud Abdel Razi. In case of repetitive meniscal tear in professional athletes, when would you advise him to give up sports? When, when would you advise repetitive meniscal tears in professional athletes? And when would you athletes. advise him to give up sports? لا أنا مش هنصحه إن give up sports حضرتك. <تصفيق> لأن طالما في فرصة. آه. آه لو في فرصة إن أنا أعمل له management هعمل له management. بالضبط. آه. بالضبط. يعني يعني ممكن أعمل أعمل من السكتم يوري من السكتم يتين. بالضبط. ده ده فائدة ال management. آه. وفي لما يبقى في good rehabilitation program خلاص إن شاء الله الأمور تبقى كويس. Okay, thank you so much, Professor Dr. Hatem Gohari, for this interesting talk. Thank you for your precious time, sir. Thank you so much. Inshallah, we'll see you in the second part of the course, in the trauma session event. Thank you, Dr. Hatem B.